as we reported last half hour, the town of Amherst is telling residents not to travel unless absolutely necessary. And many of our viewers in Amherst have some questions about storm cleanup and other things the town is asking them to do to help. So to go through it all, we are joined now live by the Amherst Town Supervisor Brian Culpa. Supervisor, let's start with the most important one for residents there, the driving the driving ban. It's set to lift in a half hour and change to an advisory. And how is work going to get the streets cleared while hundreds of cars are abandoned around town? So we've been able to tow um, the majority of vehicles out of the road. Um, there are still some vehicles in the road, uh, especially on roads like transit um, or at least off to the side. So we are lifting the driving ban. Uh, we feel like we have enough of the roads passable at this point. Um, all, every road should be passable by the time the driving ban actually does lift. Um, what we're planning to do is spend tomorrow, um, to later tonight and tomorrow, kind of putting some finishing touches on uh, remaining um, snow that is obscuring travel. What you're going to find if you go out traveling tonight is that there are going to be some areas where a vehicle was towed out of and the snow backfilled behind it. Um, so there are some snow packs in what should be driving lanes, especially on arterials. So we're going to ask everybody just to take it slow. We're leaving a travel advisory in place um, and we're asking people to avoid parking cars for the next day or so. Um, on the street so that we can go ahead and continue to get those cleaned up and have the streets, um, you know, in, in top shape by the end of tomorrow. Okay, Supervisor, we've gotten some viewer questions from Amherst residents tonight. The big one has been why some streets have not seen a plow in several days and whether you had any updates on a power outage in the area of Smallwood Drive School that appears to be giving National Grid crews some extra trouble tonight. So I can um, first talk about the, the plowing, right? So um, the bottom line for us is uh, we had, as I think everybody probably knows by now, a number of cars. I think where our total towed vehicles is up to 135. We think at some point there was about 200 to 300 total trapped vehicles, um, including semis. And that made it very difficult for anything to get around. Um, as you know, we had 48 hours of full on blizzard. Uh, Amherst never got a break. Um, so there was no break in the action. Um, visibility was zero and we can't plow um, in zero visibility like that. You just, you, you would hit something, especially with all the vehicles. So what we were trying to do is, is catch um, any slowdowns and go out with a high lift uh, plow and a tow truck, um, an emergency vehicle, all kind of in tandem. Um, you know, so we needed more high lifts. We got more high lifts uh, today, last night uh, from the county, and then today um, from a couple of contractors. So um, that's made it a lot easier to recover. Um, the reality is, there, you know, we can't take a plow truck through an eight foot snow drift. It doesn't work. You have to use a high lift. And high lift means you have to dig everything out. So our highway superintendent, um, Pat Lucy, it's his second term in office. He's been around for a lot longer than I have. Um, I thought he did a good job of making sure our crew stayed safe, um, making sure we could respond to emergencies. Um, every one of those 135 towed cars and, and almost 300 people in all had to be transported from abandoned vehicles to a safe location. Uh, we had people in, in every kind of place that we could find, um, whether they were fire stations, uh, some people in a church vestibule, people at a McDonald's, a Sweet Home and, and um, Sheridan. And every time we had to move people, we would have to dig out the vehicle, get the people into a fire truck, um, accompany that fire truck to the next location, drop that person off and go out and answer another call. Um, so the call volume was tremendous. And, and honestly, had there been more respect for the driving ban out of the gate, we would have had more freedom to move our vehicles around. Um, but it really turned everything into a parking lot. Um, you've probably seen some photos going online of Transit Road. Um, that was Transit, that was Main Street, that was Young's, that was North Forest. Um, almost all of our vehicle, all, all of our streets were blocked um, to a great degree. 
uh, it became a huge issue. And you, you can only move so many vehicles out of the way. It's very hard to tow a vehicle out of a snowbank in the middle of a blizzard. Tow truck drivers at great risk. Um, it takes a long time, and, and it's, uh, it's a very slow process. And also regarding Smallwood, that Smallwood area and the National Grid crews, can you address that? Um, just that grid crews are over there. Uh, I was, I've been through the town myself all, all day again today, just looking at, you know, where things were, um, working with some of the ground crews, talking to people. Um, the grid crews over in Smallwood had, there were a lot of trees. Um, it wasn't necessarily the, the first tree or second tree. It could be the third or fourth tree that were down. Um, I know that there were some substations, uh, down the road. Um, near the city line that were out. I don't know if the, those have been restored yet. Um, grid's still working on it. That's all they've really told us at the moment. So we're going to have to just kind of wait and see where it gets. Supervisor Culpa, thank you so much for joining us at 530 here on Channel 2. I'm sure we'll be back in contact with you throughout the days because we know we're going from snow to likely some flooding. So we'll be in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you.